Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool arcade game repair video for you this evening. I am working on this original Midway Galaga arcade game cocktail table. We got this thing in a while back, and it's in pretty rough shape, but we think we've got everything we need to fix it. The glass uh, artwork is about shot, scratched all the crap. Some little uh, punk kids have peeled off part of the control panel overlay on that side. And on this side, what are they thinking? Why would you do that? You've got a little bit of chips on the bottom of the cabinet. Coin door looks great. A few more chips down there. And a couple little chips down there, no big deal. Um, so as I understand it, this thing is blowing a fuse. So we're going to open it up, uh, which on these you do by laying the top down. I'll show you that here in a second. And uh, see if we can figure out what's going on with it and uh, what we need to do to fix it. So let's see what's going on inside of it. Now the way you open these, if you haven't messed with these Midway cocktail tables, they're really cool. The way you open it is you open the door and then inside the door there is a latch. There should be two of them, but on this one, one of them's gone. There was a latch that goes there. And so you open up so it's like that in the game. You pull this loose and it unhooks and then the top can lay down. On the actual top, you can see there are a couple bars that the latches hit. Uh, so once you do that, there's a hinge on the back door, or a couple hinges, and the whole thing lays down flat. So the monitor is actually mounted to the top thing. Now the monitor in this one, is an Electra Home G07 that we have recapped and the thing is in pretty nice shape. It's actually very clean. Look how clean the uh, frame is and everything. You usually don't see them in that clean of shape. So we think the monitor's cool. That This is there because whenever the door shut that hangs down in front of the coin door so you don't stick your hand in there and get electrocuted. Okay, uh, the game board we have pulled out of it, so we've got that in the other room. I'll show you that here in a minute. This is the power supply here, and as I understand it, the power supply is blowing a fuse. So we're going to have to figure out what's going on with that. Here is the, this is the, actually the power supply. That's the, um, I guess you'd call it, they call it a suitcase, but I guess you'd call it like the power brick. But supposedly something is blowing a fuse. Um, but even even this power supply, look how clean it still is. So we've got to figure out what's blowing a fuse, what fuse is blowing, why would it be doing that, and then uh, we've got to work on the board a little bit and see if we can get the game up and running. So I went ahead and pulled the power brick out of the bottom because I just want to make sure everything's cool with it first. You probably would never have to really re uh, pull this thing out, but... I wanted to. I wasn't sure what was in it, so I figured I'd pull it out and we'd film it and check it out a little bit. Um, so there was a bunch of screws that held it in place, um, and a couple plugs and stuff. So there is a label on the top that says, "Do not remove this shield except to perform servicing. If it is removed and left off during game operation, it will cause the game to have a wavering monitor picture." So this is like a, like a. Uh, it's to filter interference from this transformer. Is it, from those transformers being so close to the monitor it'll make the, the monitor wiggle a little bit which that was nice of them to put that on there for us so we'll take it off and underneath there are just two big transformers here everything looks pretty good I don't know that one looks a little weird hopefully that that one hopefully there's nothing wrong with that and so all of the wiring from this one comes out of the bottom, goes into it, and then comes over here to this to these fu this fuse block. So we're going to look under it too, and see if we can uh, see what's going on underneath all of that. See if anything looks screwed up. I took the screws out. I think it might slide out of that bracket. Yes. 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 Okay, so uh, this is our isolation transformer. So basically the, the uh, 
120 volts is coming in and then it's uh, sending out 120 volts again for the monitor. It's an isolation transformer. Um, and then it's also making 12 volts. And then over here you've got power coming in and then it's making two 9 volt um, with a center tap and two 15 volts with a center tap. So everything looks clean. I don't see anything screwed up. Uh, this mentions that it's got a bridge rectifier. But I don't know if it's... I don't know if that's built into it or what. Um, orange and gray and red. And then they're saying... Uh, bridge. They're saying that the orange should be fused and that there's a bridge rectifier and that'll be three amps and there's a cap going to ground on a resistor well I don't know if that's ground a cap and a resistor da, 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 da. so I don't think that's internal I think this is just a regular transformer there is some kind of something behind that but it looks like the orange and the gray run out first so basically I'm just looking to see if anything looks screwed up I don't see anything wrong with anything and we're going to check these two fuses, but we can do that from the top. Um, and we can check the other fuses from the top. So let me put it back together, and then we'll we'll look at the top a little bit closer. Okay, so up here on the top, there are five fuses, and then there are two more over here. So these two are fine. This one's fine, this one's fine, this one's fine, this one's fine, and this one was blown. So it says F7 audio, 3 amp slow blow. So it's something on the audio line, which uh, that's the 12 volt line according to that transformer on it. So that it had the orange wire that comes up here and then it runs through a fuse and then it goes back in or as an orange and black. And then remember on the other side of the transformer, it was a gray and red. So over here, the gray and red comes out and then the orange and black that comes off the fuse. So the, the orange wire comes out, goes through a fuse, goes back under the thing and then runs over to this plug. So there's the orange and black. So the orange and black and gray and red then run off to this connector which goes on the power supply. Now this connector is very clean looking. That's a new one. You can even tell if you look real close the end has been cut because basically they made a new housing out of a longer housing. So someone has replaced that. You can also tell that all of the pins are very clean and shiny right so somebody has reserviced this game which may explain why it looks so clean inside they may have taken that frame all the way out and uh, washed it down and cleaned it up really nice and made it look really good so I'm gonna do two things the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look on the on the uh, schematics to make sure that this thing is pinned right because they may have screwed up and put a wire in the wrong spot or something I doubt that because they probably got it up and running and it was running fine and it just recently screwed up and started blowing the fuse, right? But uh, So we're going to check that. Um, and then we're going to look on the schematics and see where that those two wires go after they go to this power supply. So this is, this is the power supply that this connector plugs into right there, right? So remember on the back of that transformer it had a drawing of a bridge rectifier. Well, I'll bet if you look at this connector, just assuming that it's done right, uh, here's your gray and red, which is pin, we'll say pin one, two, three, and then pin five is your orange and black, right? So pin one, two, three, four, and pin five. If you look really close, you can see by the traces, pin one and five there that they run down and start going to these four diodes just like it showed on the back of the transformer. So I'm going to check those diodes. If one of those is bad it would blow that fuse. Um, and it's highly highly likely that's what's going on. So this is the original linear power supply. Now on Galaga is a really good game that you can put a switcher power supply in, a modern power supply in. And we've done that before and we might end up doing it on this one but since everything's so clean and it's you know it's all the original stuff or close enough to all the original stuff, I think that uh, well I guess that's from Green Coin. 
I don't know if this is the original power board that was in the game or not. It's the original style. And it's not all burnt up. It's very nice and clean looking. I'm just going to try to fix this one. A lot of people think, oh, you know, the modern switching ones are much more reliable. That's just not true. These old ones are just as reliable as those. It's just they're real old. So, I mean, this thing uh, has been working up until recently. Uh, you know, I mean, it lasted, what, 30 years? One of those little box switching power supplies, it might last 10 or 15 and it might be easier to swap it afterwards, but I'm going to fix this one if I can do it. If, it. if it gets to be a big pain or there's something really screwed up or whatever, yeah, we'll wire in one of the box ones. But you got to hack the harness and all this crap. I'd rather just get the original stuff working. And typically we don't have a lot of problems out of the original stuff. There's certain, some games where it's designed screwed up or whatever, but uh, this isn't one of them. As you know... The reason they replaced those pins is probably because some of those um, got damaged. So sometimes you will have, you know, one of the wires will overheat or whatever. But you're talking about in an, in an environment where the thing's turned on all day. It's being operated in an arcade for six or seven years. And yeah, maybe sometimes you'd have problems. But we're selling games into people's home collections. You know, they're turning it on every few days, maybe, if even that often. So uh, if I can do it, I'm going to try to just repair this one. But uh, So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check on the schematics and make sure that that's wired right. And if it is, uh, we'll know that it's not a problem. And then I'm going to uh, check these diodes and see if any of them are bad. If you don't know how to check a diode, basically a diode will let power go one way, but it won't let power go the other way. So power can go through the end that doesn't have the line, but the line, that end that has the line is like a wall. Power shouldn't be able to go back through it, right? So the way you test it is you take your red probe, which is kind of like where the a multimeter basically sends just a little teeny bit of power through the red probe, and the black probe tries to pick it up, and that's how it tells what's going on. So you put your red probe on the side of the diode that doesn't have a line, and then you put your black probe on the side of the diode that does have a line, and you see if power can get through. And if it can, it should be between 0.4 and 0.6 should be the reading if you're on diode test. And the reason that it does that is because it's basic. There's a voltage drop, so if it sends one, only 0.4 gets through, or it's something like that. I don't know. You know, somebody could explain it better. But if you know that little teeny bit of information, you can figure out if a diode's bad or not. And then whenever you reverse it, it shouldn't allow power back through the other way. Now sometimes it will, and it'll end up saying the same 0.4 through 0.6. Typically, though, that's because of the way they're arranged on the board. So to test them perfectly, you need to take them out of the board, right? But when a diode fails, usually the way it fails is it will either open all the way up where power can't get through it, or it will short together where power, um, it's, it's basically just connected to both sides. It's shorted together in the middle. So I'm going to show you here. I've got it on diode check. Now I should get between 0.4 and 0.6. I, I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but you can see. Whoop. I'm trying to like just do it by prying on it so that it pops up. I'm not Japanese, so I can't use Chinese. <laughs> so I can't. Okay, so it's 0.518, right? So that's between 0.4 and 0.6. So that's correct, right? So I'm sending, it's sending one or whatever it sends through it. And then the voltage drop. Man, come on. is 0.5, which is between 0.4 and 0.6. Okay, now watch what happens when I do this next one. Point oh oh oh, and that beep, it's shorted together, so this diode's bad. Well, basically what that's doing is it's connecting our two wires directly to each other. Bam, and it's blowing the damn fuse, right? You can't ever really tell by looking, but that one is all burnt up looking. Yeah, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check all these other ones too, and then I'm gonna look in the manual, and figure out what kind of diode that is, and what kind of diode you can replace it with. Look, there's they're all over the place. There's a couple over here. There's four there. There's four there. There's a couple here. Um, so whenever you take the whenever you swap a diode to on something like this, you should take the diode out and then check it again after you take it out. Right, and then something you can also do that that that's kind of interesting is once you take the diode out, you think the diode's bad, 
go ahead and check the two holes on the play field. I mean, on the on the on the board. So you know, turn it over, and and do your same check without the diode even in there. And if you if you're still shorted, then you know there's something else on the board that's connected to it that's shorting it together. So for instance, look at this little capacitor here. Right? That's a tantalum capacitor. Those things are known for shorting together. And look, there's a bunch of them. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. So those are tantalum capacitors. And those those are known for shorting together. So it could be that like that cap's shorted and it's making this part over here shorted because they're connected together or something. So you, you just got to kind of look through that. These big electrolytic capacitors, sometimes they short together too. So we might have to swap those or we might do it anyway just as a preventative thing because they dry up. Um, this is a, I think this is just a regular ceramic capacitor. They hardly ever go bad. Electrolytics go bad. Uh, they dry out. There's like a a, a paste inside of there uh, that will dry out over the years and then it no longer connects like it should or the stuff dries out in a way that it's shorted or whatever or it just it doesn't perform like it's supposed to. So electrolytic capacitors should be replaced if possible. Um, this, and it it kind of depends on the design too. Some of them get more wear than others. A shorted diode, they don't like, like if this one's bad, you don't necessarily have to replace these even though they're the exact same diode. If they're fine, they're fine. They, they don't like wear out usually. They just go bad all of a sudden, you know. They're real cheap, so I mean you could replace them all if you wanted to. But, um, but these, these tantalum capacitors, whenever they go bad, usually they'll short together, which is the type of stuff that blows fuses and things. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to swap that diode by looking in the manual and seeing what, what type it is. I'm going to swap that diode. I'm probably going to replace all of those tantalum capacitors just because I've had problems with them. If I've got these big electrolytic ones, I'm going to replace those two. Uh, and then I'm going to check over here on our voltage regulator to see if it's um, see if it seems like it's shorted or if it's good. And then if, that, if that's all cool, we'll put the block back in the cabinet first and turn it on without this board plugged in and see if it doesn't blow the fuse. And then if I've got that diode problem fixed, we'll put this back in and turn it on and see if it doesn't blow the fuse. And if it doesn't, then we'll measure some voltages to see if it's putting out the 5 volt, the 12 volt, and I think it uses a negative 5 volt on Galaga. We'll see if it's putting out the voltages that it's supposed to. And if all the voltages are cool and everything's cool and we're not blowing any fuses, well, then we can start working on the game board. Um, this game board, uh, we noticed sitting in the cabinet, had a couple chips missing. But I think we've got them figured out. I think we've ordered some and got them in. Um, so I'm going to look at the schematics, see what diode that needs to be, swap some caps, clean some stuff up, maybe re-solder these connections and clean them up. And then we'll start putting stuff back in it and see what we run into. All right, we're all mounted back in there. It's suited and booted. So I'm uh, I'm going to, uh, of course, put the cover back on it, but I, I want to uh, plug it in first and see if the fuse blows while I'm still looking at it. So we'll see what happens. So we're good. The fuse did not blow. The fan came on. The monitor came on. Everything is copacetic. So we're going to look at the uh, power supply board and check out those diodes. All right, so after working on this thing, uh, I, I replaced the diodes, and uh, I had a couple of the caps. This one isn't even the right, it should be an axial one, but I didn't have these two caps. I put the thing back in. I'm not getting 5 volts out of it, which is the main voltage you need to run anything. You really need 5, and you really need 12. Uh, so I replaced the voltage regulator. I'm still not getting 5 volts out, so I think one of these two chips isn't performing properly, and these two caps need replaced. So we're, we're to the point where I think we're going to update it and put a switching power supply in it. So I, uh, I started looking around in the manual online to try to figure out the best way to do that. So I found something really interesting I'll show you. Okay, so here's our power supply and I mounted the new switching power supply over here on the right side of the uh, game. And I was very careful to sh close up the monitor and make sure it doesn't touch anything and all of that, right? Um, but when I was doing that, I started noticing some interesting stuff. Remember I was telling you that it had the wrong power board in it. So I started looking around and all of the manuals, so, so I had to look in the manual to see how to put the, where to put the power lines and stuff on the switching power supply. So 
looking in the manual, this is nothing like a Galaga, like we mentioned earlier. It's just it's set up different. So I started thinking, well, I wonder why it's got that uh, power uh, suitcase in the bottom. And then I thought, well, maybe it was a different game at some point or something like that, right? So as I was showing you earlier, it's got the Galaga cocktail uh, cardboard from the from the factory. And see, the serial number is 10417. And then if you look, 10417 has been stamped all over the cabinet, right? And it's even stamped in the plywood which is how they usually do it. So factory, that's the, that's the number. But if you look really close, there is another number here. It says 524. And over here, originally 524 was stamped in the edge of the cabinet, but it's had some zeros stamped over it to kind of strike it out. So I started looking in the in the uh, in some schematics online to see what games had that weird power brick in it that were around this time. So it came down to Mappy and Super Pac-Man. So what I think's going on here is that this is a Mappy or a Super Pac-Man cocktail table that in the factory they decided they wanted to turn into a Galaga. And the reason, I, whoa, re reason I think that it was uh, in the factory is because of the stamps on it and the Galaga card. If if those weren't on it, I would just think that an operator did this. But I think that, I think they did this in the factory. I think for whatever reason, they had extra Super Pac-Man. We'll just go with Super Pac-Man. They had extra Super Pac-Man cabinets, and they needed they weren't selling or they didn't have enough orders for them. So they thought, hey, let's turn them some of them into a Galaga, which had came out before. Let's turn some of them into a Galaga. That'll sell. Uh, so for whatever reason, they converted it. Another thing is the coin door has plastic inserts which is kind of from the later games and then also the vents over here on a Galaga the vents there's one down below and another one over here the vent setup is different it's set up like it is on a super pack man cabinet so I think it's a factory conversion of a super pack cabinet so let me show you something that I saw in the schematics so this is the super pack man parts manual and it talks about this power chassis which is the one that we have in our cabinet and if you look over here on the left, one of the plugs on that, that, that big briefcase down on the bottom has this connector on it. And if you see here, it has room for a fluorescent light to be plugged in and for a fan to be plugged in. And the wiring for them come out of this one connector. So to put the switching power supply in, I needed to somehow get 120 volts out of the cabinet to run it. So what you can usually do is just splice into some wires or something like that. But I thought, hey, I'll try to do it real clean. So I thought, since this is in the cocktail, they don't need it, the, the wiring for the fluorescent light. There is a fan in it that they're turning on whenever the power comes on. But they're not turning on a fluorescent light because there is no fluorescent light in the cocktail cabinet. So usually they made these uh, these suitcases and things like that in the game, and even the power supplies. They made them generic so that they could put them in more than one game. So, for instance, you would put one in the cocktail, but it could also work in the upright, blah, blah, blah. So my thinking was the power brick, the power chassis, probably still had the wiring in it for the fluorescent light, but it, there just wasn't wiring in the cabinet for it. You know, So you could take this out and put it in the upright. So I checked, and sure enough, there was 120 volts on two of these wires that weren't uh, being used. So I plugged, uh, I made a little connector and plugged two wires into the plug and then I had my uh, 120 that I could run out and run to the, uh, run over to the power supply so we could power it up. So here is the Galaga board that was in it. So uh, basically on these, usually your problem is you've got to go through, carefully take each chip out of its socket, clean the legs and put it back. Um, these were designed by Namco, so they have Namco custom chips on them. And the way those custom chips work are, uh, they were designed so that people couldn't copy them. They didn't know what was in them. So they have these numbers, so like 0876. The only two significant numbers are the first one. So this is a 08 custom chip. And this one up here is a 06 custom chip. This one up here is a 54 custom chip. 
Uh, this one here is a 51 custom chip. So over the years, people have figured out what all these custom chips do. So one of them is like, it makes all of the uh, the little stars in the background that move while the game plays. It, make, it, it makes the star field, you know, and maybe one of them uh, is some kind of, uh, it, it helps uh, address the RAM and things like that. But uh, these brilliant people over the years have figured out They've reverse engineered all of those custom chips. And they weren't just used on Galaga. There were, I don't know, maybe eight or nine different games that used them, maybe more. So when we got this board, it was missing two of the chips. So one of them was a, is supposed to be a 07 custom chip. That's also on an Exevious, and we had a Exevious parts board with that chip on it. So we pulled it off and put it on here. And then this one was a 00 custom chip, and uh, we ordered an extra one from Arcade Shop. So uh, that's a brand new chip that's been fabricated to match the original Zero Zero custom chip. We cleaned the rest of them and uh, everything looks cool. So we're going to put it in the game and see if it fires up. One problem you have on Galaga sometimes is these. These are little resistor packs. Sometimes those break off. That one is bent a little bit, but I think it's still on there solid. So, um, so we'll pop it in and see if the game will come up and play. So we have our board mounted, we have the power supply turned up a little bit. On these, they like to have uh, about 5.2 actually, if volts instead of 5 volts, if you measure it on that cap there. Um, so we've got it turned up to that. And we are up and running, but there are some graphical issues. So the explosions are just a box. The numbers that come up are corrupted looking. There's some lines on the screen. So uh, we've got to figure out all of that. Okay, so we've got lines in the graphics. So this is our buddy Steven's uh, website, arcadeshop.com. He sells parts, right? One of the most uh, known parts places. And apparently he loves Galaga because he's got an entire page dedicated to everything Galaga on arcadeshop.com. Uh, and there's some interesting information on there. So, hardware info. This was submitted by James M. So that's, Stephen didn't write all this. He got it from James M. And James M. talks about the custom chips. Galaga is overpopulated with unnamed custom chips. They are all the black chips identified only by four numbers. Here's a breakdown of the custom chips. So this is what they all do. So there's the 00 chip. That's the one, that, one of the ones that was missing that I ordered. Address multiplexer for fixed RAM between the CPU and the video clocks. Okay, <laughs> whatever that means. I guess that would be RAM that helps run the actual program. And then the O2 custom chip is a custom shift register for data from graphics ROMs. All right. The O4 custom chip is a motion object and scratch RAM to CPU bus interface. The O5 custom chip gener generates the blinking star background. The 06 is the bus interface. The 07 is the clock divider counter array. The 08 is the multiprocessor data bus interface. Uh, oh, the 07, the clock divider counter array. That's one of the ones that I had to swap that was missing. Uh, the 51 is the input IC player dip switch. So basically the controls. The 54 generates the explosion sounds. So. Those can kind of help you figure out if you have a problem. I put the thing in test and it says all the RAM and all of the ROM are fine. So if you go up here on this board, this is more information from James. And he says problems with gameplay. One of the more common problems I have seen with Galaga boards is a problem with the sprites moving objects on the screen i.e. the player ship, enemy bugs, etc. Usually this looks as if each sprite is a block of moving vertical white lines. Every single instance of this problem I have seen has been a failure of some sort of the O4XX chip. Usually the chip is just loose because of a poor socket or the legs have become oxidized and are making poor contact. Cleaning the pins of the chip or replacing the socket clears this up. Occasionally the chip itself fails. In this case, you will need to locate a working replacement. Uh-huh. Isn't that exactly what ours is doing? So he says, uh, 
problem with the sprites, it looks as if each sprite is a block of moving vertical white lines. And that's kind of what ours was doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that 04 chip off and I'm going to replace it with another one off of my Xevious parts board and see if that changes what we're looking at. We took out a 0454 and we replaced it with a 0445 because again, the only the two first numbers actually matter. So we swapped it in. We'll put it back in and see if that changed anything. So we swapped the chip, we put it, the board back in, and we basically got the same exact thing going on. So it's not the 04 chip. I'm going to call Steven up and tell him that uh, <laughs> that's not always the problem. Um, but since he mentioned that, I might, maybe we can look at the schematics and figure out what's kind of in that area that it might be besides that. I don't know. It kind of looks like RAM, but it doesn't fail the RAM test. Let me put it in test mode and we can look at that again. Okay, it does the explosion sound, so we know that custom chips, right? Right? And it says RAM okay, ROM okay, table, one coin, one credit, three fighters, rank A, sound, first bonus, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I'm going to look at some of the other custom chips, just make sure I don't see anything where I've got a leg out of something or uh, see if I see any kind of problem. And I'm also going to Google to see what the RAM test actually test it may not test all of the ram i don't know usually whenever you have lines all over the screen it's some kind of ram problem all right so i have done more research and our good buddy <laughs> i've never talked to him but he's cool uh j rock who knows all about a lot of these things uh, said on the killer list of video games one time uh, a guy had a problem with his explosion so remember our explosion is just a big white box so that's kind of a clue to what's going on and uh, he had his was the the explosion was showing up four times. So um, Mr. J Rock said, "Hey, I'd start uh, with checking one B, two E, two C, and four B. Blah 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 blah." Um, he had uh, one B fail one time, and it it made it where the explosion was on the screen four times. Uh, the guy replied back and said that yeah, it was something in that area. Okay, so if you go look at the schematics. This is 1B, so he's saying look in this area, all right? We also had Channel Maniac was saying to look over here at the O2 custom chip. So basically, it's all in this area that we're having our problems. So whenever I was cleaning the chips on the board, I made a couple little notes that I just wrote down when I saw something weird. One of the pins on the 4F ROM was shorter than the other ones. So I wrote it down just in case after we put it all together there was a problem, right? And then the socket at 4H looked like it was a little screwed up. And so a lot of people online are saying, oh, the sockets, the sockets, check out the sockets. So the so 4H is the custom chip uh, that Channel Maniac was saying that I need to check out, or that he was telling somebody else, but that they need to check out. And then 4F is right here, which is directly connected to 1B, which is causing the other guy's explosion problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the board back out, I'm going to replace this socket, and I'm going to replace the leg on this pin, I mean on this uh, EEPROM, to make it longer, to make sure that it's right. I might have to replace that socket too. And then once we get that done, we're going to try it again and see if that changes anything. Okay, so I replaced uh, the socket for 4F and I reburnt a new EEPROM. Here's my old one. It wasn't, after I took it in and out of the socket a couple of times, the legs broke completely off. One, neither one of them was that small before, but uh, one had, was about half that, uh, half full size, and the other one was kind of limp. <laughs> but it was passing the ROM test, I don't know. Uh, so I replaced both of those, and then also that one resistor pack that I was showing you that looked all screwed up, I went ahead and replaced that just because it, it didn't test right in the board. So that could have been the whole problem, or obviously that... EEPROM was a problem. Let's see what we got. We have no focus. That's one thing that we don't have. What in the world is with the focus, people? Come on, work with me. There we go. All right, so that seems to have fixed it. So I'm going to uh, button up everything inside to make it look good. 
get it kind of how I want it. Of course, I'll end up taking it apart 10 times again before we get done, but uh, we can set it back up and we can start working on a little bit of the cosmetic stuff. Okay, so now we're working on the uh, control panels. We got one of them done. It's looking pretty good. We're re taking the stuff off, repainting it, putting the new overlay on it, getting it all clean and nice. And that, then we got to work on the glass top. But uh, the cosmetics have begun. Okay, so we've cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, we put the new control panel overlays on it. Everything's cool. I'm not super happy with the underlay. The artwork underlay is not the greatest, but <sighs> it's hard to it's hard to tell what quality something is when you order it online. And the places that I like buying it at didn't have a Galaga, so. But we got a new underlay on it. We've got uh, the new control panel overlays on it. We got it all cleaned up. Uh, we were able to adjust the monitor, uh, get it looking good. So you know what's left. We just had to play it a little bit, right? So I'll set up the tripod and we'll play through it a little bit, make sure that it works like it should. And uh, oh, we adjusted the, I mentioned that, but it was a G07 monitor. I think I showed it at the beginning of the video. Very clean looking G07 monitor. Uh, but we've got it looking good. I'm going to uh, set up the tripod. We'll play it a little bit and uh, see if we can break it in. Okay, folks, it is up and doing its thing. Let's test it out a little bit. I got a little chair I'm going to sit in. All right. I can see. Hmm. Let's see what we got. It doesn't have the rapid fire or anything. It's just the, uh, you have to hit the button each time. If you've ever seen me play Galaga before, I'm convinced, I'm not an expert or nothing, <laughs> but I'm convinced that that uh, tractor beam is for suckers. It's just a way to lose a, a man quicker. Yeah, you don't, it's not as easy to do the challenging stage. But uh, you just lose it, you just lose the ship quicker. It makes you twice as wide. I'm not a fan. You gotta watch how you hide in the corner too, they will come right at you. Missed him. Stage five. That's very nice.
Ah, oh, man! I was chasing them points. Greed. Greed always does you in, people. Don't be greedy. What score do you get an extra man at? I am in need. There we go. You get it at 30,000. Mm, mm, mm. It got hectic. So do I get another one at 60,000? That's a long way to go, people. I got a long way to go and a short time to get there. The explosions you're hearing are the uh, the game next to me. Double axle. It's not explosions. It's uh, cars wrecking. This is probably my last stand. Unless I get lucky and you get an extra one at 45. I don't know why you would though, but. Sounds tripping. Did you hear the sound cut out? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to check that out. See? It's tripping, people. It's tripping. That's why I'm not gonna set the world record. The game was tripping. I couldn't. It's actually the board, it's not the amp or anything, because I can hear it. The the sounds like making like a weird whistling sound or something. See if we can figure out why the sound's doing that. So I pulled the board out. The sound, this is the sound amp. These caps are in the sound circuit. Then you know caps are known for going bad. So we're going to replace those caps to see if that fixes it. I think it probably will. This is a volume. Uh, this is also a cap here. It's a little tantalum cap. Those are also known for going bad. Uh, this is a volume knob. This little transistor, and I think this transistor and possibly this one. Um, are also involved in the sound. This chip is kind of the source of most of the sound. It's a custom. And then this little preamp here. So it's this, this, it's basically all this top stuff. So we're going to replace all these caps. I'm going to clean this chip and put it back in. And then uh, we're going to try it again. Um, since it's just, since it, it does it after it's been on a while, it's almost certainly these caps, but we'll see. 
Okay, folks, so those caps seem to have fixed it. I've had it on all day, all day, and haven't seen any problems. So let's try playing it again. Surely if it's gonna mess up, it would mess up after I start trying to film it for you. <laughs> wow, this should make like a new Twin Galaxies thing playing with one hand on Galaga. It's, it's actually doable on the cocktail. Oh, that got me. Yeah. All right, so I think I fixed it. So, if you get sound problems, replace the caps. That's kind of, that's kind of, uh, that's true on other games too so but I think that fixed it so I hope you enjoyed the video looks like we've got this thing working pretty good and in good shape brought another one back from the dead leave your comments below give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and uh, make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't now by the time you see this video we may not have this Galaga for sale anymore uh, it may have already uh, uh, flown off to somebody else's game room but you can see the games that we do have for sale on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com and check them out. So we'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it.